Kia ora koutou, and thank you for the opportunity to once again address the Auckland Trade and Economic Policy School, albeit virtually. The platform provided by ATEPS for in-depth discussion on New Zealand trade policy is essential for generating constructive debate, for emphasising the central role of trade in the government's wider work programme, and for explaining how trade can benefit all New Zealanders. Trade ensures opportunities for our world-leading goods and services exporters to grow and to create jobs and prosperity. We are a global exporter, with one in four New Zealanders jobs dependent upon exports. Trade is essential to support our way of life. New Zealanders' ability to trade is even more important with the growing backdrop of global crises, including the long tail of a pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, an energy crisis, the looming climate crisis, and a global recession. These shocks have contributed to the government leaning heavily into the trade and export growth agenda over the last 12 months, and delivering effectively on key New Zealand trade objectives. New Zealand's supercharged approach to reconnect with markets overseas and the tireless work carried out across the full suite of trade policy issues in 2022 has given us a strong foundation to overcome these challenges together. With my time today, I want to look to the future and briefly cover two of our major calendar features for New Zealand's trade policy agenda in 2023. The 40th anniversary of the Closer Economic Relations Arrangement with Australia and our hosting of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. In these uncertain times, our relationship with our neighbours across the Tasman is critical. Australia is New Zealand's most important relationship. With some 700,000 New Zealanders calling Australia home, we are more than just natural allies. We are family. And at our core, we share a great deal of trust and understanding. As many of you already know, New Zealand and Australia benefit from one of the most advanced free trade agreements in the world. Our closer economic relations, at CER, has facilitated the free movement of people and goods across the Tasman since 1983. Given its 40-year vintage, it's easy to overlook the significance of the CER on the trans-Tasman relationship. We tend to take for granted the transformational nature of the CER on our respective economies, when in reality, the CER facilitated $24 billion in total two-way trade last year alone. Recognised by the World Trade Organisation as the gold standard of international trade and economic relations, the CER is supported by our world-leading single economic market agenda, which helps enable the seamless operation of business and trade across the Tasman. The 40th anniversary is a milestone opportunity to ensure the CER architecture remains fit for purpose, modern and future focused, and to examine how, as allies, Australia and New Zealand can work together to exchange views on the economic and geostrategic challenges of our region and advance our common interests. It's certainly an exciting year and there is a great deal for us to work together on. Another significant event in the trade policy calendar this year is New Zealand's hosting of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP. CPTPP is the world's leading open plurilateral free trade agreement, signed by 11 economies, which together represent over 13% of world trade. Our hosting year provides an opportunity to highlight and demonstrate leadership in areas of importance to New Zealand, including inclusive and sustainable trade, our commitment to open plurilateralism, and regional economic integration. To guide our work, we have four high-level objectives for our host year. First, we will be working to advance ratifications and accessions by supporting the expansion of CPTPP by economies that are willing to demonstrate they can meet and adhere to its high standards. New Zealand recognises that efficient, fair accession rules and processes will help make CPTPP more attractive for potential aspirants. Second, 
we want to enable effective and improved implementation of CPTPP. The successful implementation of CPTPP is critical to realising its benefits, helping to make trade faster, cheaper and more predictable while ensuring its safety and security. As part of this, we will be supporting the CPTPP three-year review and working to enhance digital trade facilitation, including in customs processes. This will help to ensure that the agreement remains relevant and brings tangible benefits to CPTPP members. Third, we want to use this year to promote inclusive and sustainable trade. New Zealand as host has the opportunity to showcase our Trade for All agenda, which will include a focus on supporting Indigenous trade and continued promotion of the values that saw New Zealand rank first in the world for 2022 Sustainable Trade Index a recognition of our commitment to rules-based and liberal international trade, to high quality environmental regulations and to high levels of social cohesion. Finally, New Zealand is determined to deliver a high quality and authentic host year. Our host year creates opportunities to showcase our country and show manakitanga to our guests. We want our hosting year to reflect the interests of all New Zealanders an important part of this is to make sure we develop our work program in close collaboration with treaty partners and stakeholders. We will continue to work collaboratively with CPTPP members and New Zealanders to build support and buy-in for these objectives, with the centrepiece for our host year being a ministerial-led commission in Auckland on the 15th and 16th of July. 2022 was a massive year for New Zealand's trade agenda. We concluded two new high quality free trade agreements with the UK and the EU. We worked to ensure other agreements remain modern and fit for purpose, with entry into force of an upgrade to our FTA with China and the substantive conclusion of our negotiations of an upgrade to our FTA with ASEAN and Australia. We also saw a significant outcome from the WTO with a new agreement on fishery subsidies an outcome New Zealand has been at the forefront of trying to secure for over 20 years. 2023 is already shaping up to be no different. In addition to what I have detailed today, negotiations for the US-led Indo-Pacific Economic Framework continue at a pace. New Zealand continues to receive international attention for our concerted open plurilateral agreements like the DEPA and ACTS, uh, we're also looking forward to the entry into force of the UK FTA and the signature of the EU FTA. As we look towards the future, your attendance at this year's Auckland Trade and Economic Policy School and the robust discussion that I'm sure will take place over the next two days, it will only serve to further strengthen New Zealand's trade policy. Thank you all very much for your time today and a special thanks to the Auckland University Public Policy Institute, including Professor Jennifer Curtin and Dr Suzanne Woodward. Thank you very, very much. Kia ora.